विच इज द लार्जेस्ट एनिमल इन द ओशन गिव मी द आंसर विच इज द लार्जेस्ट एनिमल इन द ओशन इजी राइट ब्लू वेल ब्लू वेल इज द लार्जेस्ट एनिमल इन द ओशन बैलोन बैलोन ऑफ टेरा मस्क्यूलरस इट्स कॉल्ड बैलोन ऑफ टेरा मस्क्यूलस इज अ साइंटिफिक नेम फॉर द ब्लू वेल ओके सी द लेंथ 29.5 meters huge 29.5 meters balon tera and we are talking about the blue whale blue whale it's the largest animal in the ocean which is the largest animal on land it's easy the elephant right now which is the fastest animal on land can you name it it's the cheetah yes which is the tallest animal on land so giraffe right so now tell me what is the common feature among all these different animals what is the common feature can any one of you tell me what is the common feature of all these animals it's not similar to that of the birds it's different okay let me help you out you know what the unique feature of all these animals that i've talked about is the presence of the mammary gland to feed the young ones yes and hence these are included in the group mammals mammals the characteristic feature is the presence of the mammary gland to feed the young ones fine you have to remember this is the typical characteristic feature of the mammals now the question is where do the mammals live well the mammals they are found in a variety of habitats for example see in forest you will find the elephant the lion in deserts you will find camel the kangaroo rat in the polar regions yes the frozen regions you will find the polar bear the snow leopard in the mountains you are going to find the mountain goat the mountain lion on the grasslands zebra you will find the giraffe what are also mammals are found the blue whale and the dolphin please pay attention to the scientific names blue whale that's balanoptera balanoptera and the dolphin it's the delphinus fine pay attention to this also in the caves bat teropus and the bear bear they are they are the scientific name is arsidae they are found in the caves well did you know bats are the only mammals which can fly yes so they are the only mammals which can fly and answer this question now come on let's see who can answer first the scientific name of the largest animal on earth is it's easy it's the blue whale and the answer would be balanoptera fine let's talk about the external features of the mammals what are the external features adaptation of the limbs two pairs of limbs yes tetrapods two pairs of limbs adapted for different functions and the functions can be walking running climbing burrowing yes swimming these are also limbs don't misunderstand these are also limbs but the functions are different so of course the structures will also be different then flying and gliding like the bats talking more about the external features yes we have the external ears the external pinna is present the outer part of the ear sticks out that is again a typical characteristic feature of the mammals well aquatic mammals do not have external pinna again that's an exception aquatic mammals do not have the external ear if i talk about teeth again that's a very interesting characteristic feature heterodont that means different types of teeth for different functions let me show you we have all these type of teeth incisors they are generally used for cutting canines they are used for tearing for example if you take a close look of the canines that is present in case of the tiger lion the flesh eating mammals so they have much stronger much bigger canine canines because they have to tear the flesh premolars molars they are generally used for grinding okay and these are typical type of teeth present in human beings the other feature yes thigodont that means that the teeth is embedded in socket in the jaw so we have a jaw within which the teeth is embedded that's a typical characteristic feature of the mammals and it's called the thigodont well so this is a socket 
and see the tooth is embedded inside it. This is the next is again a very important characteristic feature that's the diffidant. Teeth is formed twice in the lifetime. First, the milk teeth, which we have, and then when we grow, it falls off and is replaced by another set of teeth called the permanent teeth. Now I have permanent teeth. I'm sure you must also have the permanent teeth right now. And initially, during your childhood, we had the milk teeth. Talking about the internal features, yes. Homeotherms. Homeotherms. Warm blooded. So we can maintain stable body temperatures. The mammals can maintain stable body temperatures. They are warm blooded animals. Again, a typical characteristic feature presence of body hair. But what is the function of body hair? The body hair, you know, traps a layer of air above the skin. And this air helps to insulate the skin against the heat loss. Well, so that's a typical function of the body hair. Now, the question is, what about whales and dolphins? Do they have body hair? The answer to this is, aquatic mammals have hair on their body at some point of time in their life and the main function is believed to be just for sensory perception. You know what? So the baby whales, the baby dolphins, they generally have, at times, they have these hairs on their body and the typical function is sensory perception. You know, when these babies are hungry, they want to feed, they come and rub their body against their mothers. Because of the presence of the hair, they can sense this urge for feeding. Well, but when they grow, these hair are lost. These hairs are lost. Now, so body hair prevents heat loss. The next characteristic feature is the presence of sweat glands. Yes, see, these are the typical components of the skin. You see the sweat glands. We also have the sebaceous glands. I'm going to talk about it. We have the hair follicles. You see blood vessels and fat. Sweat glands. What's the function? Can anyone of you tell me what is the function of the sweat gland? Yes, the functions are regulates body temperature whenever we are feeling warm, heated up, then we start sweating. That's a natural mechanism of cooling down. It also removes waste products. Talking about the next, that is the sebaceous gland. Well, it produces an oily secretion which is called the sebum that keeps the skin moist. And this is the sebaceous gland for us. Okay, you see the sebaceous gland. It secretes the sebum. It keeps, it's an oily secretion. It keeps the skin moist. Well, now, we have lungs, you know this, but can you breathe underwater? Of course not, we can't. Then how come these mammals, the whales, the dolphins, they can breathe underwater? They also have lungs, they're mammals. Well, that's because of a typical characteristic which I see the blowhole. And let me show you how they breathe. See there, have you ever seen this, that these blue whale, the dolphins, they come up and they spray water. You know what actually they are doing? They are trying to breathe. They breathe through the nostrils which is called the blowhole which is present at the top of the head. So what happens? They just have to come and float. They have to just bring their blowhole, the top head part outside the water and they can breathe, take in air. So while they are swimming or resting underwater, they use that air which is, which is, which they have inhaled through the blowholes. Fine. Well, whenever they need to breathe again, they come up on the surface, towards the surface and breathe. Amazing. Circulatory system, of course, they have four chambered heart and you know about it. Now, did you know this, that the heartbeat of, a, of an adult blue whale can be detected from a distance of two miles away. It is so strong. Fine. Two miles away, you can detect the heartbeat of a blue whale. Let's talk about more about the internal features. Reproduction, it's unisexual dioecious, that means the sexes are separate. Sexual dimorphism, that means the male and the female, they have distinct appearances. See here, see in this image. You know, the antlers that you're seeing, it's present in the male deer. And males, they are more presentable than the females. Well, talking more internal fertilization, yes, the fertilization happens internally. The development is direct, no larval stage. 
fine. If I just show you, I'm sure you know about all these right now. Male, female, ovum, spermatozoa, the sperms, they will fuse from the zygote. And yes, it's a direct development, no larval stage, no intermediate larval stage. 